blessed you. God has blessed you. You have money in the bank to pay your bills. You have cars in the driveway. God has blessed you. You go on vacation. God has blessed you. God has blessed you. He's a blessing God. And he's worthy of our highest praise this morning. I want to lift his name up. I want to make his name great. I want to magnify the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And his mercies endureth forever. From everlasting to everlasting. I will bless the Lord at all times. Your praises, O oh God, shall continually be in my mouth. My soul doth make her boast in the Lord. Yea, this poor man cried, this poor woman cried, and you heard me, and you delivered me from all of mine enemies, from all of my troubles. There is nothing that is too hard for my God. Oh, yea, I say again, there is nothing that is too hard for my God. We serve an awesome God this morning. We serve a powerful God this morning. We serve a God that can do anything if you just have faith, if you just believe, if you just agree with the Word of God. We stand on the promises this morning. They are yea and amen. Oh, there's no negativity with Jesus Christ. Everything is good. Everything that he made is good. We are good. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are victorious. This is a victorious church. This is a victorious church. Without spot or wrinkle, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed this morning? I said, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb this morning? Then go ahead and praise Him for salvation. You're not going to go to hell. You're going to go to heaven. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just bless the Lord one more time. Are you grateful this morning that hell lost another one? That you've been set free? Hallelujah, Jesus. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. No. 
soul of God. I'm so grateful that I can experience him now, that I don't have to wait until I get to glory, that I can experience a life-changing God right here in this service. So I wonder if across this house, if you would just close your eyes and lift your hands to the King of glory, the one who is able. Hallelujah, Jesus, we worship you and we love you, God, for who you are and all you've done. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, just entertain his presence. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. will bow down and say you are king so let's start right now why would we just want to be with you. Come on, is that your desire today? King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Yes, the world
just want to be with you. Come on, the only barrier is us. Just want to be with you. Somebody make room for him. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. So I'll sing hallelujah till you come again. Come on, is that your heart's cry? And I'll dance in your presence, God, till you come again. I'll just worship my Savior till he comes again. And I bow. I don't know what you're walking through this morning, but the King of Glory just walked into this building. He will find me worshiping. He will find me surrendered. He will find me prostrate. He will find church as the spirit of the Lord is here. Come on church, let it flow out right there.
here for a little bit church it's okay to rest right here and let the burdens off put all the burdens all the pain all the suffering onto Jesus and he'll carry your deeds Jesus. Jesus. 
Is he worthy of your trust this morning? Give him everything, every problem, every situation. Are you willing to give it to him? Hallelujah. We need to trust him more. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. about praising God until he comes, about singing hallelujah to God until he comes. And on Tuesday when I get up, I get up with a praise to God and I get up with a dance in my step because I know that every day is a good day because God is my God, because Jesus is my Savior. Amen. Praise God. I could talk about each one of these songs, but I'm not up here to preach to you. I'm not up here to teach you. I'm not up here to do anything but say thank you for coming out to church. We want to know, we want you to know what's going on over the next several weeks. And then we're going to uh, have you come up and uh, we're going to allow you to worship and giving of your tithes and offering in Jesus' name. Amen. This Thursday, we're having service right here. Picnic and praise. Praise God. If you've never been to one of our picnic and praises, you, you are missing it. We have a great time. This is a time of fellowship. It's a time of uh, worship. And I think this, this uh, picnic and praise this Thursday is going to be a time of worship. It's going to be, uh, there's not going to be any speaking, so to speak, but everybody who wants a chance has a chance to get up and sing a song or, or give a testimony to God in Jesus' name this Thursday. So uh, if you get a call about bringing food, please respond to that call. We're going to be starting at 7 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have hot dogs and hamburgers provided by the church, and then everybody else is going to be bringing some, some food, and it's going to be a good time in Jesus' name. And we pray that you come out and be with us this uh, Thursday on Pricknick and Praise. Amen? And then Friday, everybody say Friday. Friday. Friday, September 1st, the very next day, we're having a special service right here at Cross Creek Apostolic Church. We are going to be entertaining the District 4 of the uh, Maryland, D.C. District. We're going to be uh, Section 4, excuse me, Section 4. So all the churches in our section are going to be here. It's going to be a wonderful time of praise and worship. It's called a night of worship. So there's going to be singing, 
praising, worship. It's going to be a wonderful time, an awesome time. And not only with our congregation, but it's going to be congregations like seven or eight different congregations are going to be here. We're going to, you're going to want to be here early. It starts at 7. Come early. Stay late. Be involved in uh, our worship service on Friday night. Amen? If you're involved in a life group that meets on Friday night, we will not be meeting. We will be here on Friday night to praise and worship God with our uh, brothers and sisters from Section 4. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And then on September 17th, everybody say September 17th. Oh, you can do better than that. September 17th. Oh, come on. Say it like you believe it. September 17th. That's a little bit better. I always tell people, when I'm up here and I ask you to say something, it's in your outside voice. Not in your inside voice, in your outside voice. So let's try it one more time. September 17th. All right, that's better. We're going to be having our annual uh, All Nation Sunday. All Nation Sunday. This is a joint ILCDA, CCAC uh, service, so it's going to start at 12 o'clock. There's going to be food afterwards from all over the world. We've got representation in this congregation alone. We've got representation from all over the world. And so Sister Bleedy is in charge of taking care of all, coordinating all the food. If you're from a country that is not the United States uh, and you would like your flag represented in our nation, uh, uh, parade of nations, I believe you need to see Sister Allie. Uh, so that you can get the flags, so uh, we can coordinate that. But we want you to be here on what day? At what time? Twelve o'clock for All Nations Sunday. Amen. Amen. We want to see everybody come out to celebrate the fact that God is no respecter of persons. He loves us all. The Bible says Jew and Gentile men and women. He loves everybody. He loves everybody. And nobody is excluded from God's plan of salvation. Amen? You are all, all, all people are welcome at God's table of salvation. Amen. And we want to celebrate the, the nations that God has brought to this congregation, to this body of believers. Amen. Amen. So what day is that going to be? What time? Amen. Praise God. If you will stand with me, I told you I was going to ask you to stand again, so don't say I wasn't going to do it. We want to give of our tithes and our offering. This is a form of worship, just like our worship in song and our worship in dance and our worship in clapping our hands and waving our, waving our hands like this. All those are forms of worship. Giving back to God with tithes and offering is a form of worship. And so as you come, as you we uh, follow the uh, praise team as they sing, as you come, come in a spirit of worship and bring your tithes and offerings unto God. He only asks a very small portion, and he allows us to uh, spend and, and, uh, and to, to use the rest. So let's give unto God with a spirit of praise and worship. Amen? Amen. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray that you bless this offering and these ties, Lord, I pray that your will would be done. I pray that this, the, the body of Christ would be built up in this area because of the giving, the sacrificial giving of your people in this congregation, Lord. I pray that you would bless them, that you would use them in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Come and give in Jesus' name. Praise God.
moment to just share. This morning, anxiety, fear, and doubt tried to just attack me. And I was so afraid to sing this morning. I don't know what came over me, but I had to remind myself that there is power in the name of Jesus, that no chain can hold me down. No, no enemy can attack me. I have power in the name of Jesus. I want to remind someone in myself, there is power in that name to break every chain, to break every chain of depression, to break every, every chain of anxiety. Can we just lift our hands right now? Can we just worship our King and remind ourselves there is power. There is power in that name. The words, you know the words of this song. You can help me sing this song. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power.
declare that name. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. I wonder if for a moment we could just recognize that God, the all-powerful God is right here. We come in with burdens and chains sometimes, but God is asking us to lay every weight at his feet, to cast every care before him. If there's a need that you have in your life, I wonder if you would just raise up your hands and call upon an almighty God. He is able to save. He is able to deliver. Come on, somebody. Just lift your voice to heaven. My God breaks every chain. He is a delivering God. Oh, have your way, Jesus. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Come on and thank him for who he is and all he's done. Come on and put some worship on your lips this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Giving praise this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Break every chain. Let every chain be broken. Let every... Hallelujah. Obstacle be cast down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. You got to lift him up. You've got to praise him. Haramo koyanda rabaha. Cast down every vain imagination, Lord. Hallelujah. Set every captive free this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, praise God. Why don't you turn around and greet one another this morning? Hallelujah. All of our Sunday school can be dismissed at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love to fellowship. Amen. Praise God. If you find your place, amen. It's good to be in God's house today. How many of you like what you feel this morning? I feel the power and the presence of the Lord. Amen. We're going to change mics. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful spirit that's in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. If you haven't felt him yet, then I just encourage you to worship him. Because it's in the middle of your worship that you begin to feel the power of the Lord move. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Have your Bibles this morning. Turn with us to Luke chapter 9. I want to begin reading at verse 18. As you're turning there, I'd just like to 
remind you that we are starting for the month of September a media fast. Amen. Hallelujah. I had announced that we would start it on September the 1st, but I later found out that Brother Reaver asked us to start on the 5th and go from September 5th to October 5th. So since I want to be under authority, amen, we've been talking about submission on Thursday nights. So your pastor is going to submit to his superintendent, or, and uh, we're going to start on September the 5th, amen, a media fast. If you don't know what a media fast is, that means no TV, no Facebook, no email, no Instagram, no TikTok or whatever it is, no media, amen. That's going to be hard for some of us. And instead of watching or spending time on your computer, you're going to open up your Bible, you're going to read the Word of God, maybe get you a good Christian book to read, spend some time in prayer, maybe call a brother or sister and have a conversation, talk about the good things of the Lord. I'm not getting too many amens this morning, praise God. But I tell you what, if we'll dedicate this time to the Lord, we're going to see something great happen. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember a long time ago hearing the preacher preach, and he'd say, what goes in is going to eventually come out. So good things going in, good things coming out. Bad things going in, bad things coming out. Amen. So... We can't expect a move of God if all we're feeding our flesh on is the things of this world. So we're trying to separate ourselves from the things of this world and dedicate ourselves to Christ. Amen. And when we do that, the blessings of the Lord are ours. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise God. Luke chapter 9, verse 18. You have it? And it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Amen. They answering said, John the Baptist. But some say Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answering said, the Christ of God. Amen. Peter had a revelation of who he was. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the, of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said unto them, All, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Let's read that together. And he said to them, All, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Amen. Hallelujah. Not my words, but it's the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let a man deny himself, take up his cross, and follow him. I want to preach to you this morning for a little bit about being commissioned to serve. Being commissioned to serve. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now let your anointing go forth flow through my lips, oh God, I pray, not my will, but thine be done. Touch every heart, touch every soul today. Let there be a divine visitation. Let your perfect will be done. We just give you praise this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. You may be seated. Amen.
Amen. So he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Most of us, we don't like to deny ourselves, do we? Amen. Some of you were even considering, as I was talking about the media fast, well, do I really want to do that, or do I not really don't want to do that? Amen. Because we don't want to deny ourselves. But Jesus said, deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow him. Amen. I'm reminded also in the book of Matthew, verse 19, when Jesus comes walking by the Sea of Galilee, amen, he, he sees Simon and he sees Andrew, his brother, and they're casting their nets into the sea. And he says in verse 19, and he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Follow me, he said, and I will make you fishers of men. The interesting thing that I notice is in verse 20, it says, and they straightway left their nets and followed him. Praise God. They immediately followed Christ. Amen. There was no contemplation. There was no excuse. There was no, well, maybe I'll do it later. Hallelujah. No procrastination, in other words. But the Bible says when the master came by, they didn't even have to think twice about it. They immediately followed after Christ. Whoo, hallelujah. We are privileged men and women this morning. We are blessed of Almighty God. We have been privileged that the master has walked by our house if you'll if you allow me to say it that way god has visited you and god has visited me we are here this morning because we have decided to follow him i don't know about you but i want to follow him to the best of my ability i have said many times lord where you lead me i want to follow I have prayed on a daily basis, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Come on, can I get a, an agreement? Can I get an amen? Can I get somebody to preach with me this morning? All right, praise God. Hallelujah. So straightway, we have decided to follow Jesus. There is blessing in following him. There is power in following him. There's an anointing in following him. There is blessing in following him. Hallelujah. Every blessing of the book is yours, and every blessing of the book is mine this morning. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit, joy, love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, they all belong to you and I today. Amen. And not only does the fruit of the Spirit belong to us, but the promise of an eternal home in heaven, amen, has been promised to every born-again believer. So again, I say we are blessed today. We are blessed that Jesus walked by our house, and he called us by name, and he brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light, and he filled us with the power of the Holy Ghost. He put something real on the inside of us, something that is substantial, something that is eternal, hallelujah, that man can't give you, and man can't take it away from you. So I say again, we are blessed of God today. We are called of God today. We've been empowered by God. We've been equipped by God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said to Peter and Andrew, he says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. We know that the Bible tells us that the very heartbeat of Christ is to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. That he has put his power down on the inside of you and down on the inside of me. That we would be witnesses for him. That we would be people that would go out and fish for men and women, if you will. Amen. That we would spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we would not be ashamed of the gospel, but we would be bold in the power of his might. That we would be 
quick and ready to give an answer to every man that asketh us the reason of the hope that is within us. Praise God. Praise God. Come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pick up your cross on a daily basis and follow me. Hallelujah. Amen. Seek me. Follow me. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. We must become followers of Christ. Praise God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful today that he pulled me out of darkness. I'm thankful that he filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful that I've been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of my sins. I'm grateful today that there's a power living on the inside of me that's not of this world, but it's an eternal power. The power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just want you to know you've got the power of God living in you. You've got the anointing of God living in you. There's nothing that you can't do through him. He said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Hallelujah. He said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be what? Witnesses unto me. Clap your hands to him. Make a joyful noise to him. So God has called us, and God has ordained us. Amen. If you read the second chapter of the book of Acts, there was never a church until the second chapter of the book of Acts. The church was born on the day of Pentecost. When they came in one mind and one accord into an upper room and they began to have a prayer meeting, they began to seek after God, they began to wait upon the Lord. And you know the scripture as well as I, but the Bible says there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house, not part of the house, but all the house. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all, say all, everybody in that upper room was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in tongues as the power of God gave them the utterance. Hallelujah. I said the church was born. The church was born in a prayer meeting. The church was born by the power of God. The church was ordained, amen, as an incredible institution by Almighty God himself. You and I are part of the church. I said we are the church of the living God. God has called you. God has ordained you. God has empowered you. And God has equipped you. He even said to Peter, he said, in Matthew 16, 18, he said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Peter, upon this rock, what rock? The rock Christ Jesus. I, God, will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The devil and all his demons can't overtake you. You've got God on your side. You've got the Holy Ghost on the inside. You've got a divine authority living on the inside of your heart. Amen. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. And he did build his church. And he is building his church. Praise God. And the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the living God. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. Somebody be encouraged. You belong to almighty God. And God's on your side today. Amen. 
the 12 apostles. He put the church in the hands of the 12 apostles. Amen. <laughs> he had faith in us. Amen. And he still has faith in the church. Sometimes we lose faith in each other, but God's never lost faith in us. I said God still has faith in us. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 24, verse 47, it says, hallelujah, the last commission that he gave to the apostles it says and that repentance and remissions of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem so he commissioned the 12 apostles to go forth and to preach what the gospel hallelujah he said you'll begin in Jerusalem but you're going to preach it to all nations Then he was taken in the clouds, and now the apostles, with their brand new charge of this future church, have everything in their own personal control. So Jesus left a legacy of truth, and Jesus left the promise of the Spirit. Hello? He had taught them. He had preached to them. And he said, go and wait in Jerusalem till you're endued with power from on high. And so he left the promise of the Father to them. But those 12 men had to make a decision. Am I going to be a disciple? Am I going to follow Christ? Or am I just going to say, well, it was good while it lasted? Mm hmm. You know, <laughs> I won't even go there. God forbid. Amen. Makes me wonder about some folks that come to church. Amen. They they get baptized. They get the Holy Ghost and then you never see them again. It was just something else they did on a Sunday morning or afternoon. Hallelujah. But I don't know about you, but when God filled me, he gave me something, amen, that I hungered after him. I thirsted after him. I am still hungering after him. I am still thirsting after him. Hallelujah. My, I've never been satisfied. I still want more. I said I still want more. Amen. There's something wrong when we get satisfied. <laughs> I said, there's something wrong when we get satisfied. We need to hunger after him. We need to thirst after him. We need to draw nigh to him. We need to understand that without him, we can do nothing. We must have Jesus. So he left the hands of the church in the hands of the 12 apostles, but he had commissioned them to serve. Amen. He didn't commission them to just say, hey, I got saved and that's all I got to do. But he saved them that they might go out into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in that his house may be full. He saved them to be fishers of men. He saved them, amen, to build a church that the gates of hell shall not prevail against, amen. He saved them to be a shining light in a darkened world. He saved them to be the salt of the earth. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah, I'm telling somebody this morning, it's great that you got baptized, it's great that you got the Holy Ghost, but he didn't save you to sit on a pew, he saved you to be a witness, he saved you to serve in the kingdom, he saved you to go out and tell somebody how great he is, he saved you to share your testimony with somebody on your job or somebody in your neighborhood, amen, that they might hear the gospel and that they might be saved. He commissioned you and I to serve him. And so we can say that, yes, he built his, his church upon the solid rock. And, yes, he commissioned the 12, but he's also commissioned you and I this morning. So just as the apostles were commissioned, you and I are commissioned 
we are responsible for the church in the year 2023. We are the church of the living God. I said we are responsible for the execution of the vision that Christ had for his church. <laughs> That's right. God has called you. God has ordained you. God has equipped you. God never called you to do anything that he did not equip you for. He said ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So God called you out of darkness. God empowered you with the Holy Ghost. God has equipped you. Some of us have heard enough preaching to last a lifetime. Hallelujah. He said faith cometh by hearing. That we walk by faith and not by sight. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Let faith arise. Let the enemy be scattered. Begin to walk in faith. Begin to say hallelujah. Hoshatai. Begin to hallelujah. Say the word of the Lord and quote the word of the Lord and speak faith and speak power and speak life. <laughs> Praise God. I, I said the church is empowered to you and I. We've been chosen, we've been challenged, we've been trained, and we've been ordained by God. And we have also been commissioned to serve. Hallelujah. If you've got the Holy Ghost this morning, God called you. If you've got the Holy Ghost, God has already ordained you. And he has already equipped you. We make so many excuses. It's time to quit making excuses and just start doing the work and the will of God. Hallelujah. We need to understand the hands of the church and the hand of every sinner person in this world is in our hands. Amen. Every minute there's somebody dying and going to hell without a hope in God and it doesn't seem to bother some of us. It needs to bother us because it bothers Christ. He said it's not my will that any should perish but that we should all come to everlasting life. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm reminded of Paul who was on the road to Damascus. Amen. Hallelujah. And he was crucifying and killing the saints at that time. His name was Saul. His name hadn't been changed yet. Amen. But there came a shining light down from heaven and God began to have a visitation with Saul. And he said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And what did Saul say? He said, who art thou, Lord? He knew exactly who it was that was doing the talking to him. He had a visitation from God that day. Amen. And he said, Saul, hallelujah, why do you persecute me? Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 16 in Acts 26, the Bible says, he said, but rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and those things in which thou, in which I will appear unto thee. Hallelujah. Get up, Paul. Get up, Saul, from the, amen, the blinded light. Amen. Go down and see the man, Ananias. There, there it is again, another man. Amen. God has always had a man. God has always had a man to tell somebody how to be saved. Saul, go see Ananias, and he's going to tell you what you need to do. But Saul goes down, and he sees him. Amen. And guess what? Saul is filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And God changes his name to Paul. And it's just like you and I. Hallelujah. We had a visitation one day from the God. Oh, hallelujah. From God himself. God, hallelujah, showed up and knocked on your heart's door and knocked on my heart's door. And we had a powerful visitation. And God came down in a powerful way. And we were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And God changed us in a 
second. God changed us in a moment. God changed our destiny. God changed our purpose. God changed our desire. God changed our name, if you will. He put his name upon us. Hallelujah. So we are not our own anymore, but we are bought with the precious blood of Christ Jesus. He said, therefore glorify him. Therefore praise him. Therefore give him thanks today. Why? Because Saul, hallelujah, has had a Pentecostal experience and Saul has had a visitation from God. You and I are blessed today because we've had a visitation. We've had a supernatural experience. Don't take it for granted. That Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you is the greatest thing that God ever gave to mankind. Clap your hands, giving praise. Oh, hallelujah. The persecutor of the church has now become the preacher of the gospel. And God has commissioned him to serve. Not a man, but God. I said, not a man, but God. You and I have had visitations from God. I didn't call you. God called you. Somebody ought to give him thanks for the calling. God is searching for someone to serve. I'm going to say it again. God is searching for someone to serve because God is in need of a man. I don't mean that gender-wise. Humankind. He needs humankind, man or woman, male or female. Amen. He's searching for somebody that will say, here am I, Lord. I make myself available, God, here am I. Not my will, Jesus, but thine be done. Whew. I don't know about you, but when he filled me with the Holy Ghost, I made a promise, Lord, whatever it is you want me to do, I'll do it. Wherever you want me to go, I'll go. I'm standing here this morning still trying to fulfill that promise. Hallelujah. He's taken me a lot of different places. Hallelujah, and I'm still trying to fulfill my promise. Hallelujah, I kind of I just believe in my own, there's, I don't have Bible for it, but I kind of believe in my own mind that you can't really even get the Holy Ghost without promising that you'll go where he wants you to go and do what he wants you to do. Not my will, God, but thine be done. Hallelujah, we need more people that will say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. God always works through a man. Amen. God has chosen to work through mankind. Amen. Hallelujah. The great Azusa Street revival that many of you know about, it all began with a man named William Seymour at the beginning of the 20th century. He had to have a man. Amen. The great outpouring of the Holy Ghost in Topeka, Kansas was all centered around a bunch of Bible school students that was founded by Charles Parham. Hallelujah. He had a man. I said he had a man. Can I tell you this morning that God just needs one man? I said God just needs one man. God just needs one man that will be willing to hear the call of God and be available to the call of God. I said God just needs one man or woman that will hear the voice of God and say, Lord, I want to serve you. I'm committed to your service. I am committed to the call. I'm committed to whatever it is that you want me to do. Here I am, Lord. I just want to be used of you. God is still calling men and women this morning. And I believe with all my heart, that God laid this message upon me because I've thought about it and I've prayed about it for several months. 
And I want to tell you that some of you are sitting in this congregation this morning and God is calling you. There's a universal call going out this morning that God is calling you. It's time to quit making excuses. It's time to quit, amen, saying I don't have time. It's time to quit saying, amen, whatever it is that we've been saying to God. God is just looking for somebody that will hear the voice of the master and say, here am I, God. I just want to be used of you. He finds us in the most unpredictable places. He called Matthew a tax collector. The tax collector was despised by the people of the society at that time. Amen. But he called Matthew. He called, hallelujah. He called Luke a physician. He called Peter and Andrew and and James and John when they'd been out fishing. A bunch of fishermen, not the well-educated, not the popular in society, not the wealthy, but he just called somebody that made themselves available. Amen. And when he called them, they didn't hesitate, but they straightway left whatever they were doing and they followed him. I believe he called a William Seymour. I believe he called a Charles Parham. And I believe that he's called you and I this morning. Clap your hands to him. God is still calling men and women this morning. I believe he's calling somebody even right now. And I've come to tell you that God can do everything and anything that he's put in your heart. I said God can do anything and everything that he's put in your heart. Because he's also chosen to work through humanity. We are earthen vessels. And God has put his spirit in and earthen vessels to accomplish his divine will. You and I are the hands of Jesus. You and I are the mouthpiece of Jesus. You and I are the feet of Jesus. God has ordained it that way. Hallelujah. So I say again that God is calling somebody this morning. God is looking for somebody that will heed the call. Somebody will say, Lord, here am I. All I want in my life is to be used of you. God is still calling giant killers. I said, God is still calling a giant killer. There's giants in our land, but all he's looking for is a David to make himself available. God wants to defeat the enemies in your life. I'm reminded when, amen, the Midianites, they came out, amen. But, amen, God had a Gideon, and Gideon was ready, and Gideon Gideon was willing, and Gideon presented himself to the Lord. I'm reminded when a garrison was conquered by a Jonathan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of uh, Esther that stood up for her people when it could have cost her her life. Hallelujah. These are not Bible stories for us just to read and to pass them by and just to say, isn't that nice? But these Bible stories are in the book this morning that somehow there would be some faith begin to arise in our hearts in 2023 and say, hey, I want to be a David. Hey, I want to be a Gideon. Hey, I want to be an Esther. Hey, I want to be a Jonathan. Lord, I present myself to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's. And to top it all off, he spread the gospel to the entire Gentile world because he had a Saul that presented himself 
and became Paul, the greatest apostle we read about in the New Testament. In fact, when Paul came into a city, the scripture says, are these not they that have turned the world upside down for the cause of Christ? Whoo, what a testimony. Amen, what a testimony that he turned the entire world upside down for the cause of Christ. He brought the message to the Gentile world. That's all of us. We wouldn't be here today if there had not been an Apostle Paul. But God had a man that said, Yea, Lord, here am I. Use me. Praise God. God has always chose to limit his self to humankind. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants to do, but he has chosen to work through his creation. He has committed himself to men and women to carry out his will. I said he's committed himself to us who will commit ourselves to him. And carry out his will. And he's searching for volunteers to enlist in his royal service. We serve the king of kings. We serve the Lord of lords. And God is looking for men and women who will stand up and heed the call and say, Lord, I want to be part of the royal service. I want to be what you want me to be. He's looking for someone to step out of the ordinary. He's looking for somebody to get out of the square box they've put themselves in. He's looking for somebody to separate themselves from the crowd. He's looking for somebody to submit themselves to him and, and say, Lord, here I am. I present my body a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. I volunteer for duty, God. See, he won't make you do it, but he literally gives you an opportunity. The opportunity is yours and mine. Hallelujah. The question is, are we more concerned about our own agendas than we are God's? Amen. There's a group of us probably that are concerned more about our own well-being than we are God's. But if we really got God living down on the inside of us, if we are full of the Holy Ghost, there will be a burning desire down on the inside of our hearts that we can't sit idly by, amen, and just watch the world go to hell without a help, a hope in God. Amen. There's got to be something that will burn on the inside of our souls. Hallelujah. Every man of God that God has greatly used has spent time in the master's service. The disciples themselves spent three and a half years listening to his preaching and listening to his teaching. They invested themselves into the things that were eternal. I'm pausing on purpose because some of us, we spend very little time investing ourselves into the things of God. We invest ourselves in all the carnal things of this world. And then we convince ourselves that we don't have time to do anything for God. Well, I think when we go on this media fast, you're going to find out you have a whole lot more time than you thought you had. If you go on the media fast. Amen. We must understand that spending time with God pays eternal dividends. I can't pay you. This church can't pay you. But God can pay you. Whew. And he pays well. 
I said, God will pay you well. <laughs> Praise God. Time spent in his service pays eternal dividends. So when the gospel is preached, lives are transformed and disciples are trained and a vibrant church begins to echo the joy of the Lord. Hello. I said when we begin to invest in God's kingdom, guess what? The gospel begins to be preached. You can preach the gospel on your job. You can preach the gospel to your family. You can preach the gospel in your neighborhood. You can preach the gospel wherever you go. And when you see lives are transformed, amen, there's a joy that comes with watching somebody that you have witnessed and testified to and perhaps taught a Bible study to. And when they begin to know Christ as their personal Savior through water baptism and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, their lives are transformed. And there's a great joy that comes upon you because you had a part in them coming to know Jesus. And when the church begins to focus on souls instead of fighting amongst ourselves, amen, there's great joy in heaven because the waters of baptism are troubled and people repent of their sins and people are getting baptized and we don't have time to fuss with one another because God is doing great things. We've got to take care of the babies that have come into the church. And therefore, the joy of the Lord begins to well up on the inside of the church because we're excited about the baby that has been born. Woo. It's time to get excited about some babies. I see Sister Mia back there with the baby this morning. She loves that child. My, my wife loves her brand new grandbaby. Hallelujah, I don't know a woman in here that doesn't like, amen, holding a child in their arm. Amen, there's just something about the innocence of it all. Hallelujah, and so it is with the church of the living God. We've got babies coming in. We've got to get excited about the kingdom. We've got to begin to nurture the babies. We've got to begin to take care of the babies and forget about all this other junk. Come on, give me an amen whether you want to or not. Amen. Hallelujah, because God wants to transform some lives, and God is looking for a vibrant church. A church that's full of power, a church that's full of zeal, a church that's full of the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. A church that is involved in the kingdom of God. A church that realizes, amen, we can't do it, but he can do it. Hallelujah. God is wanting to pour out a supernatural revolution, if you will. Amen. God wants to show his power. God wants to show his mercy. God wants to show his grace. Hallelujah. Bear with me. I know I'm going a little long this morning, but hallelujah. I won't read all this to you, but I, my mind went back to Elijah and Elisha. Amen. I wonder this morning, where are the Elishas of our day? Amen. The Bible says in, amen, in chapter 19, verse 18, it says, So he departed thence, talking about Elijah, amen, and found Elisha, the son of Japheth, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Verse 20 says, And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him, and he took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh and their instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. And then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. There's a whole lot in that verse. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah. Now, if you know the story of Elijah, Elijah, amen, we know how 
he called all the prophets of Baal together, amen, and he built a sacrifice, and he said, whatever God answers by fire, we're going to serve that God, amen. And so the prophets of Baal cut themselves and danced around and did all that they could for, I don't know, hours, amen. And finally, Elijah had enough of it, and he said, amen, hallelujah, now it's my turn, Amen. And he poured water all over the sacrifice and he prayed a simple prayer and the fire came down and consumed the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you our God answers by fire. Our God is a prayer answering God. Our God is on time. Hallelujah. Amen. The story goes on that, amen, Jezebel, that wicked, amen, queen, if you will, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. She, what Elijah did, he killed all the prophets of Baal and she got mad because he killed all her prophets, amen, amen. And so Elijah flees and goes to a cave, amen, and he hides out afraid of Jezebel. Now tell me something this morning. God had just consumed a sacrifice by fire and showed himself strong You'd think his faith would be on cloud nine. But now he finds out a woman is against him. And he runs and hides. Instead of relying on the God that just answered by fire. And really what we read is he got back there and he had a little pity party for himself. Well, God, I stood up for you, and now Jezebel wants to kill me. Why, I am the only one left that's serving you. Woo. And sometimes you and I feel that way. We think we're the only ones that, God, that is really serving God. I won't go into all that. But God reminds Elijah, he says, there's 7,000 that hasn't bowed their knee to Baal. Hallelujah. You may think you're the only one, but God's got an army. God has always had a people. God has always had a church. Amen. Since the day of Pentecost, God is on control. God is not worried about the numbers. He can take, amen, a Gideon army and defeat a multitude, if you will. So Elijah is back there. and So the angel of the Lord comes and says, Elijah, what are you doing back here? Amen. It's not time to feel sorry for yourself. It's not time to quit. Hello. But it's time to get busy and do what I tell you to do. Amen. Can I tell you this morning that God is fervently seeking this morning for qualified successors who will deny themselves and take up the cross. And follow the call of the master. Amen. Elijah had an Elisha. Amen. And God is looking for people that will deny themselves. That's what he, in our opening scripture, he says, deny yourself and pick up your cross daily and follow him. God is looking for men and women this morning that will hear the heed and the call of the master and deny yourself and deny your flesh and deny your self-will, if you will, and say, Lord, here am I. I want to be used of you. He's calling for somebody that will hear the word of the Lord, and he's calling for somebody that will say, I want to be about my master's business. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to respond to the call so Elisha's need to respond see now we read where Elijah comes walking by and Elisha is in the field plowing with his oxen notice Elisha wasn't at the school of the prophets. 
Elisha wasn't reading his Bible. Elisha wasn't even praying, but he was plowing in the field. Whew. And the man of God walks by, and he throws his mantle upon Elisha, and Elisha knew exactly what that meant. He didn't think twice. He left his oxen, and he ran after the man of God. He asked the man of God to go back and bid his parents farewell, and the prophet said, go. He went back and kissed his mom and dad goodbye. And the scripture says that he boiled the animals and, and they ate of the flesh. I've heard it preached that he even burnt his plow. I don't know if he did or he didn't, but it sounds good to me, so I'll use it. But I think it's a type, if you will, that when God calls you, you don't go back to the things he brought you from. That was the end of him plowing in the field. Hallelujah. He didn't go back to plowing the field anymore, but he began to follow the man of God. I want to tell somebody that God is walking around in this building this morning, and he's looking for somebody today. He's looking for somebody to hear the word of the Lord. He's looking for somebody to say, yea, Lord, here am I. He's looking for somebody to say, Father, not my will, but thine be done. He's looking for a man or a woman or a boy or a girl that say, Lord, I would just want to be used of you. I just want to be used of you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. And God is looking for somebody that's hungering and thirsting and after righteousness that wants to be used of him. And he's throwing a mantle upon them. Amen. And he's saying, hey man, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Hallelujah. See, now I just threw the mantle on you, young man. Amen. And as long as you sit there, you'll never do a thing for God. But if you'll come and follow the man of God, the anointing will be upon you. You better get up out of that chair and follow me right now. In the name of Jesus, I threw that on you for a purpose because there's a call upon your life. There's an anointing upon Upon your life, he tarama kayanda, ato romo hushanda, ala romo hoto, he karama hata. Yea, Lord, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost be upon him. Use him mightily for your kingdom. Let your perfect will be done upon my brother. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, give him a double portion of your spirit, God. Let the anointing anointing of the Holy Ghost be upon my brother. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost lead him and guide him and direct him. Oh God, let him hear your word. Let him forsake the things of this world and let him walk in the power of your might. I pray in the name of Jesus. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm not saying he's the only one this morning. I wonder, are there any other Elishas in this house today? Is there any other person that will hear the word of God? Is there any other person that will say, Yea, Lord, I want to be used of you. Come on, lift your voices, lift your hands unto him. Are there any Elishas among us? Is there anybody that wants to be a successor to Elijah? Whew. I want to flow with the power of God. I want to lay hands on the sick and see the sick recover and the lepers cleansed and the dead raised. I want to stand in the gap and challenge the false prophets. I want to stand before kings and let the kings tremble. I want to be like a Moses that will part the Red Sea. Hallelujah. I want to be an Elijah that calls fire down from heaven. Is there a man or a woman 
Is there a Shunammite woman, hallelujah, in the house this morning? Is there an Elisha in the house today? Is there somebody that will hear the word of God and say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done? The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Hello. Faith comes by hearing. Not hearing just any old thing, but hearing the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why it's important to come to church because you hear the word of the Lord preached. Faith comes by hearing. Hear me this morning. Faith doesn't come by miracles. Faith doesn't come by signs and wonders. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And if we will allow the word to find a lodging place in our hearts, amen, it will be a spontaneous thing that will happen. There will be signs and wonders and miracles, but faith does not come because somebody got healed. I have prayed for many a men that have been on their deathbed, amen, and some God has spared, and they're not even in the house of God this morning, amen. They're not even serving God. There, there's been people that's gotten up out of wheelchair. There's been blinded eyes that have been opened, and they're not serving God today, amen, hallelujah. But our faith arises when we hear the word of God. When the word finds a lodging place in our hearts, we can stand like men. We put on the whole armor of God we pick up the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit and we say come on devil give me your best shot because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world it happens because we are people of faith praise God praise God praise God God is looking for a man or a woman. Amen. Hallelujah. That's busy in the field of labor. That's busy in the field. That's plowing with their plow. And God is walking by and he's throwing out his mantle. And he's saying, come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Come and follow me, and I'll show you things you never dreamed of. Notice Elisha's qualifications. He was busy in the field. And he heeded the call of the prophet. See, a lot of times a call will come and we don't say yes. He burned his plow. He established his priorities, and he was willing to leave everything behind and pick up his cross and follow after the man of God. He sacrificed his oxen, showing that he was committed to the call. He bid his family goodbye, showing that he was completely separated, and he followed the man of God, faithfully serving Elijah. He was known as Elijah's servant. His credentials were that he poured water on the hands of Elijah. For all those years, it seemed like a menial task. He wasn't exalted. He wasn't, he wasn't famous. He was merely Elijah's servant. But he was faithful. I said he was faithful. And when it came time for Elijah to leave this world, Elisha asked for a double portion of his spirit. Whew. He had served faithfully, and he desired. He didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for land. He didn't ask for anything but a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. Whew. <laughs> mm.
So Elijah said, if you're with me, when you see me leave, you'll get your wish. <laughs> and Elijah stuck with Elijah like he was glue. Hallelujah. I've come to tell somebody this morning that if you'll dedicate yourself to the things of God, if you'll follow after Christ, hallelujah, if you'll hear the word of the Lord this morning, if you'll allow faith to arise in your heart, God will keep his promise to you. There's a need for a call this morning. There's a need for an Elisha. There's a need for somebody that says, here am I, Lord, I'm willing to step out of the box. I'm willing to move away from the crowd. I'm willing to linger in your presence, God. God, consume me with your fire. Make me a flame. Mm. Consume me with the Holy Ghost, Lord, and make me a flame. I can't help but remember the old preacher, Jonathan Edwards, who said, they asked him why so many people came out and what to hear him preach. He says, I don't know. He says, all I do is set myself on fire, and they like to come and see me burn. <laughs> Whew. Just set yourself on fire. They will come to see you burn. Is there anybody that says, here am I, Lord. Set me a fire. Make me a flame. Use me for your kingdom. Help me to be what you want me to be, God. Stand with me this morning. Hmm? It's not time to go back to what God brought you out of. But it's time to hear the word of the Lord this morning. God is knocking on somebody's heart's door. God is calling you to a deeper consecration, to a deeper dedication. He won't make you do it, but he's simply walking up and down these aisles this morning, I believe, with all my heart, and he's casting his mantle upon you. Will you hear the word of the Lord? Will you hear the word of the Lord? Will you let faith arise? As they sing this song, I'm inviting you, if you'd like to be used of God, to step out from your seat, that's come down to this altar and say, Lord, here am I. Help me to be what you want me to be. Help me to do, Lord, what you want me to do. Will you come? Hmm. You can use anything, Lord, Lord you, you can, can use. use me. Thank you for coming. Take my hands, Lord, take, take my, my feet. feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak to me. If you can use anything, you can Lord. Use anything, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, you see every person me. that's come this morning. You see every person that wants to you dedicate themselves to you. Lord. Set them afire today, God. Make them aflame. Let your divine will and providence be done in every life. Ha <laughs> ha. Devil, you're a liar. You're a liar. Haramakayanda. Hilorobo Hoshatarabaha. Let your spirit move this morning, God. Let your spirit move. 